Hi church, I wanna share with you today about prayer. After hearing Pastor Guy's sermon on Sunday, I felt like this was something that um, my prayer life has not always been consistent, has not always been so strong and powerful, but over the years I have learned and I wanna share some things that, work for, that have worked for me. But one thing that I wanna show you is I wanna show you and share with you this picture of my older son, Mikey. He um, played um, basketball at college, in college, at Arizona Christian, and for the first couple of years I would always see him go to the center line of the court before they started playing, and as his team was warming up and, you know, shooting baskets, whatever, he would always go to the center court and he would, what I thought, stretch. I thought he was stretching, and years later I realized he's not stretching. He was kneeling and praying, and so I took his picture one time and I asked him, what do you say? What are you praying for? Are you praying for victory? Are you praying that you win? Are you praying that you make all the baskets, that you do such a great job? And um, he said, no, I'm not praying for victory. Obviously, we don't win every game, so I'm not praying for victory. But um, he just told me he was praying to do his best, to give glory to God on that court and to control his temper when it needed to be controlled and, and to make sure that people were safe and that no one got hurt and then that during that game. And um, it just made me realize how important it is to truly give God our best and our best in prayer and what that looks like. And um, so again, like I said, my prayer life wasn't always perfect, but one of the, th there are some things that I've learned I'd like to share with you. So one thing that I learned is schedule. We need to schedule. Um, a time. We use our smartphones for um, calendars, for scheduling appointments. We write them down on the calendar so we know we have an appointment. I want to encourage you, in Mark 1.25 it says, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. You know, like I said, we use our, our phones to schedule things. If we're going to have company, my husband says, oh, let me check with my wife and make sure that's okay. And then he asked me, check the calendar and see if this day works for us. And But we need to schedule a time. And years ago, I remember before, many of you know Joy Shin. She's a mission, one of our missionaries here at church. And um, they hadn't left to Africa yet. But she told me, I told her that I wanted to work on my prayer life. And she has an awesome prayer life. And so she says, oh, you need to schedule. You need to make time. And so I said, okay, I want to do that. And she's like, okay, meet me here at church every day at five o'clock in the morning. Uh, five o'clock in the morning. But I did it. I did it for about a week and a half, maybe two weeks. And then I realized, well, why can't I just pray at home at five o'clock? And, um, but it got me into that schedule, got me into the routine. And sometimes there's times when I get up in the morning, no one even knows I've gotten up. They are still asleep. I go and I pray and then I sometimes go back to bed. And I just want to encourage you, we need to schedule time with God. Who better and what a better way than to, to make the effort and to schedule time with God. The other thing that worked for me is finding a prayer partner, finding someone that you can trust and be vulnerable with and someone you can commit to who you know it's whatever you talk about is going to stay within you too, but finding a prayer partner to pray for you and to pray with you, to intercede for you when you need interceding, just find a prayer partner, someone that you can trust and you can pray with and say, I'm struggling. I, I need help. We can't do this alone. We need to be together and, and commit to each other. Another thing that worked for me is don't feel limited by or confined by space. Um, you don't have to be kneeling by your bed for hours on end. You can, if you go to the gym, you can pray at the gym. If you're a jogger, God bless you if you're a good job, if you're a jogger, if you, you can pray while you're jogging. If you like to hike, you can pray while you hike. If you um, are swimming, you can pray while you're swimming. If you're cleaning, you can pray while you're cleaning. If you're driving someplace, you can pray while you're driving. Just don't close your eyes. Years ago, before Bluetooth, I, ha I would always put um, some ear pods in my ears like this. And it was just dangling down, wasn't connected to anything. But as I drove, I didn't want people to think I was crazy talking to myself. So I would put in my ear pod and drive to work. And when people looked at me, I would be like, oh, I'm, I'm talking on the phone. Because I didn't want people to think I was crazy. But in Thessalonians, it tells us, pray continually. Ask God. Talk to him. He's your friend. Talk 
to him like you would. And so I want to encourage you, um, don't be confined to a space or a location. Pray anywhere, pray everywhere. And don't feel limited by time. Um, I heard a saying once, I do not pray very long, but I don't go long before I pray. So I do not pray very long, but I don't go very long without praying. And I think that's so important for our lives. It doesn't matter the length. You don't have to use big words like Pastor Guy says. Just pray from your heart. Pray what you feel. That's what God wants from us. If you are one of those who can sit for hours and pray on your knees, God bless you. Can you say Superman? But if you're not, God is just as interested from hearing from us throughout the day. When you're stuck in traffic or when you've got problems at work, or when you're being faced with a temptation, he wants to hear with us from us. He wants to hear what we're going through. And then the, another thing that I try and do is slip away. Excuse yourself. Um, Jesus was a master at this. Um, in Luke 5, it says, but Jesus often withdrew himself to places and prayed. And um, I know you think that you're busy, and you probably are, but no one is as busy as Jesus. He was discipling 12 men. He was preaching. He was followed by crowds. He was healing people. He was traveling, doing miracles, people pressing up against him. And yet he still stopped and slid, slipped away to spend time with God. And um, have you ever woken up in the middle of the night? There was no reason for it. No phone call, no loud noise. You just suddenly woke up. I always think that's God saying, I haven't heard from you. I need to hear from you. And um, I remember one time I woke up in the middle of the night and my older daughter was probably in junior high and kind of tough, tough years. And um, I went into her room while she was still sleeping. I had been woken up and I went into her room and I knelt down by her bed and I prayed. And she stirred and turned around and looked at me and said, Mom, what are you doing? And I just simply said, I'm praying for you. And she turned over and she said, oh, sweet went right back to sleep and I, I just don't want us to be limited slip away at times and spend time with God and then one other thing is don't limit yourself to a certain type of prayer maybe you need to start your day confessing and saying God you know what I blew it yesterday and I need to confess um, maybe you just need to go and have a prayer of worship and listen to worship music in your car or at home. I know when I'm home alone and uh, my neighbors probably think I'm having a party because I got the worship music blaring and I'm cleaning house. And maybe you just need to have a time of prayer where you just worship God and just praise him for who he is and how great he is. Um, sometimes when I'm walking or I go for a walk, I just, I'm so grateful and just a time of worship of being thankful another time where we can be um, have a time of prayer where we're just thankful thankful for all the blessings that God gives us so maybe have a time of thankfulness where you have a prayer of thankfulness I know walking you just are so grateful and thankful for beautiful flowers and blue sky and that I'm able to walk that I have two feet to walk and just a time of thankfulness and then maybe there's a time when you need to intercede, a time of prayer to intercede for those people who you love, those people around you. For, um, you know, I, I often wonder why people don't take more advantage of on Sundays, every Sunday, Pastor Guy says, you know, if you need prayer, if you are struggling, go and, and there's prayer partners over there. I always wonder why people don't take advantage of those prayer partners, those people who are there, who are ready to intercede for you and pray for you. We can't do this life alone. We need each other and we need to pray for each other, but we need to be open and honest and say, I'm struggling and, and allow people to pray for you. So maybe there needs to, to be a time and a time of petition where we just ask God for what we need. Yes, he knows, but there just comes needs to come a time when we just need to ask God for the things that we need and write down your prayers. I keep a book of just prayer requests. And if someone says, oh, I need you to pray for me, I write it down in my prayer request book and I go through those and I've done it for a long time and I have lots of prayers that I go back and write down how God answered those prayers. Um, when I was a little girl, my parents arguing, I wrote down one time, mom and dad are arguing, are they going to get a divorce? 
you know, my parents celebrated 50 some years of marriage. And so God answered that prayer. Um, or when our youngest son was going to be born, they gave me a test and they said that he was going to be born with Down syndrome. And God answered that prayer. And I have a perfect, beautiful son who is healthy and wonderful and funny and witty and, and is perfect. And so God answers those prayers. And so I would encourage you, find a book, find a way to go back and see God's greatness and how he has provided for you and taken care of you. And and the last thing is, is, is then acknowledge that those prayers have been answered by God. Acknowledge that he's in control and he knows what's best. You know, that country western song, thank God for unanswered prayers and 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 just acknowledge that God is in control and he does know what best, what is best for us. And often he sprinkles little blessings on us and you might be praying for something and one door closes, but I'm a big fan that when one door closes, it's because God's got something better for you. And so I want to encourage you to just try and have a healthy prayer life. It's so vital for your walk with Christ. Um, I want to challenge you. If you were like me years ago and I didn't have a strong prayer life, I want to encourage you find one thing that you can do, whether it's a prayer journal or scheduling time or finding a prayer partner, or just start with this every morning before your feet hit the floor. When you wake up and you open your eyes, just say, good morning, God and help me to have a great day. Depending on your day, maybe you've got a, a day where you're gonna be swamped at work. We'll say, good morning, God, just help me at work today. Or good morning, God, I've got a doctor appointment that I'm really worried about. Can you just calm my nerves and give me your peace and comfort? Or good morning, God, thank you for a good night's sleep. Find ways to just connect with God. And prayer life is so vital and so important. So I want to encourage you, continue, look for ways to communicate with your best friend, God. God bless you.